Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Kirk and it's D. About to react to this vid. Kendrick Lamar breaks his silence and explains the not like us diss. And he denies being angry after beefing with Drake. Okay, he has finally spoken up. We're gonna hear what he has to say about this whole situation. He used to speak about this album, okay? The beef is gone, it's over. All right, let's move on. Where is this album? Kendrick. Uh, let, let's hear what he has to say. Let's watch. He's going to be on YouTube with it, man. Kendrick Lamar is now doing interviews as he sat down with Harper's Bazaar magazine. But obviously there has to be I'm a little bit of a me. wrinkle with everything that Kendrick Lamar does. So this interview, even though it was for this magazine, it was done at the request of Kendrick by SZA. They get into mental health and motivation, and Kendrick says his yeah. actions are not motivated by anger, but understands that love and war both deserve to- This contour on her nose looks crazy, bro. Be acknowledged. Not that they represent him, but he acknowledges that they both need to exist in the world. And of course, he would be asked about Drake and Not Like Us, and he would give his definition of what it means to him. What's up, y'all? It's your man Talkers World Report for the Chick Smooth channel. We gotta talk about this. SZA didn't waste any time. As soon as they sat down, she starts off saying, I wanna ask you about your mental health. Do you feel like you suffer from mental illness Ooh. or experience it ever? Or do you just feel like you're in a multitude of feelings and you're not putting a label on it? Kendrick would say, I grew up with that term. I was hearing it when I was five or six years old. So you identify with it, but not as it? Then he says, my whole thing is, it's all experience. I say some shit on a record and identify with a moment and then I don't identify with it anymore. That's just growth for me. All that shit is subjective. Then SZA says, it's giving self-therapy, mm. which Kendrick replies, I think it's going back to my inner child, right? I was trying to understand myself, trying to find people I could relate to, how to identify myself outside myself. It sounds crazy to a lot of people. I really can't see myself out of my body. When I do that, I have no judgment towards it. It's too many eyes on me to not remove myself. That shit is scary to anybody else. Which SZA focuses on and asks, are you scared? And he would say, no, because I've learned that I can't identify with my performances on stage. I can't hold my true whole identity to that person who's on stage. Because if I did, that means I would judge every movement, every time I mess up a lyric, every time I'm off key. It's too much to deal with. So I have to have a distance between the performer mm. and the person I close my eyes and look at the ceiling with. I had to develop that tough skin at like 16 or 17 years old, not knowing it was not only for my career, but for myself. It's mentally ill for sure. I don't think and then so. the conversation gets a little more spiritual as before I, I asking that. about that God, SZA asks, have you done ayahuasca? And Kendrick says no, which she then replies to surprise saying, what? I wonder how you're arriving at all these conclusions. SZA, girl, <laughs> books, uh, in, inner work, reflection, meditation, you don't have to do uh, drugs <laughs> to come to these realizations, girl. That's such a wild thing to say. <laughs> like, what, what? You ain't, you ain't do ayahuasca? Girl. I want to talk to you about your spiritual practices. How many spiritual practices contribute to your day to day? And he says, all day, every day. She says, all day is ceremony? And Kendrick gets personal saying, ain't no BS, ain't no cliche, but I literally talk to God. Like, it's to a point where I'll be starting to think I'm going crazy. But then he has to remind me, no, this is really me. Well, if that's true, and he does talk to God every day, how was Drake ever going to win a rap battle against God? Drake said 20 versus 1, but God I guess he missed a, a very game. important person. <laughs> but Kendrick will continue, my early morning practice is that I have to run. When I started running, that's where I started to understand. There was this threshold of pain in the spirituality for me. I remember my shins was aching and I was like, I got one mile to go. Then I get whispers and downloads and start talking about shit that I want to know about. And next thing I'm three miles in, four miles in. I wake up and do it every day. She says, loss of self, you have to break yourself. And he replied, I have to. And then SZA would try to dig deeper into his internal creative and spiritual practices. As she says, I'm grateful for the God tea, sidebar. What do you feel like your top three contributing factors to self-transformation in the last few years have been? And he says, the power of honesty and being honest with myself, perspective about the person sitting across from me and learning that vulnerability is not a weakness. That last one probably been one I'm still developing. 
To that, SZA will ask, which one was the most difficult? And Kendrick will talk about his childhood and how there is no growth without vulnerability. He says, the last one was most difficult. She says, why? And he replies, we talk about our childhood. I hate going back to that. It's traumatizing. My pops, he was tough. He was militant. As far as every day, you are expected to go to work, take care of your family, get back up to do it all over again. Being a man type shit, right? And he never showed no weakness. He never showed any emotion that could garner a one-up from the person sitting across from him. And I learned to experience that, mm -hmm. not knowing I had the same traits, right? But for what I do, there is certainly no growth without vulnerability. If I understood the power of vulnerability earlier, I could have had more depth and more reach to the guys that was around me in the neighborhood coming up. You know, our parents, they never had these outlets to express themselves the way they wanted to. I've always looked at us as somewhat of a beacon of hope for them. I've always wanted to know, how does your mom feel about your self-expression? He would ask SZA. SZA would give a story about how her mom grew up and how SZA was able to give her mom freedom through her music. And Kendrick said, you did give her freedom. And SZA says, and she gave it to me. But she would turn that right into, when was the last time you cried? When was the first time you cried? The and Kendrick was time. saying, I would say the last time I cried was probably on Mr. Morale on the Mother I Sober record. It was deep for me. SZA would ask, would you say you've done more crying recently than you have in your life? Okay. He said, now? Yeah, I have to. She said, it's cleansing. And he replied, it might be easier for you though. Which SZA replies to, I cry all the time. I'm gonna cry right now because that's just beautiful. Wait, you didn't tell me. What was the first time that you allowed it to happen? Which then Kendrick says, the first time I allowed it to happen is documented, actually on stage. In 2011, when Dre and Snoop and the whole West Coast was out, and they was like, this is the torch that we were handing off. Dre passed me the torch, and a burst of energy just came out, and I had to let it flow. My tears is all on the internet. And now I look back, and I love that moment. I love that that happened, because it showed me in real time expressing myself and seeing all the work that I put forth actually come to life in that moment. And for those of you who don't remember, here is that moment. You got the torch, nigga. You better run with it. <laughs> Beautiful West Coast moment though, minus uh minus Very, then after very, a couple more questions, she will get right into nice the one. real question that we all want to know. Can I ask you a hyper-masculine question? You can also tell me to shut the F up. What does not like us mean to you? He would laugh and say, not like us? Not like us is the energy of who I am, the type of man I represent. Now, if you identify with the man that I represent, SZA will cut him off saying, break that man down for me. And Kendrick was saying, this man has morals, he has values, he believes in something. He stands on something. He's not pandering. Mm. He's a man who can recognize his mistakes and not be afraid to share the mistakes and can dig deep down into the fear-based ideologies or experiences to be able to express them without feeling like he's less of a man. If I'm thinking of not like us, I'm thinking of me and whoever identifies with that. SZA says, now, can I say something else in that realm? Or you want me to get away from that? Can I ask you something else? And hilariously, he asked, is it mean? She says, no, it's more like, I thought it was really interesting that there was any consensus at all that you might be an angry individual. For me, I don't find that any energy that comes from you comes from an angry place. And actually, the last hour and change pretty much solidifies that it's almost from a monk-like place. So when you feel the surge of energy in records like that, where is the root? Is it anger? And he would say, I don't believe I'm an angry person, but I do believe in love and war and I believe they both need to exist. And my awareness of that allows me to react to things but not identify with them as who I am. Just allowing them to exist and allowing them to flow through me. That's it's what I believe. Past. And yeah. SZA says, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead before I say something crazy. Do you think SZA did a great job when she's done doing music? Is being an interviewer or having a podcast something that you would wanna see in her future? I don't know, cause she lied a lot, so I really don't know. <laughs> 
what, what take from her when she's talking about herself. But, you know, yeah, asking other people questions, sure, sure. Interesting. He's like, okay, Scissor, you can interview me. Nobody else, though. I don't know what stupid shit y'all <laughs> journalists are going to ask. So, you know, I, I'm going to let Scissor do it because I trust her. So I think that's dope. Uh, but, yeah, very interesting take. He's saying he wasn't angry. I mean, you could definitely argue that he used some very uh, angry language. <laughs> he definitely said he hates the way that Drake walks, talks, dresses. He, he definitely said he thinks people like Drake should die. And and these are very angry words, you can argue for sure. But, you know, he's saying that that's not what he felt. Maybe he felt frustration, you know, because that's what uh, is very prevalent in the industry. You know, that lifestyle that Drake represents and glorifies. So maybe he was just frustrated with that as a whole. And he, you know, projected that. <laughs> you know so maybe that's just what it is and he wasn't actually feeling anger I don't know I'm not this man I can't speak for how he felt internally you know that that's up for debate um but yeah he's saying he wasn't angry at all so there's that uh but yeah very interesting hearing him uh break this down and speaking on this because he's been very silent since everything took place so it is cool to you know hear him say something but Kendrith Lamarth the <laughs> third where where's this album that's what we should be talking about maybe he's gonna wait until the super bowl like after um or maybe right before i'm not sure i'm sure there's a business uh decision that has taken place about you know when he's gonna drop because i always thought that he would drop you know very close to not like us you know, going number one and being this big record, I thought that would be the best business decision. But since he got the Super Bowl, it's like, oh, wait, it's another business decision at play. So who knows? I guess we'll, we'll see whenever it drops. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye!